I thoroughly believe that the McFarlane Toys Dark Knight Trilogy wave was rushed. I love the Dark Knight Trilogy, even with the flaws of Rises and kind of the initial stepping grounds of Batman Begins, and even a couple of the little things here and there of the Dark Knight, the entire trilogy is very near and dear to me. So when I heard that McFarlane Toys was going to be doing a wave dedicated to not just Batman, but pretty much a good chunk of the rogues gallery from that trilogy set of films by the master Christopher Nolan, trust me, I was excited. I was there. I was like, oh my God, as soon as those pre-orders go live, I'm going to do it. And when I heard rumblings that they were ready to ship from the directly from the McFarlane Toy Store, I actually grew a little hesitant. Well, it looks like the Bane Build-A-Figure here confirms my fears as to what I was trying to really suppress in my mind. I thoroughly believe that the McFarlane Toys Dark Knight Trilogy wave was rushed. And I feel like Bane here is pretty much the biggest piece of evidence to prove that. So let's cover the figure itself before I, I actually do lose uh, my mind, at least potentially. You can see right here that he is meant to be a little bit on the larger side and they got one of those dimensions correct he's definitely the tallest amongst the bunch of all the dark knight trilogy figures and the actual resemblance to tom hardy's bane is there but much like with some prior mcfarlands as i've documented before there's going to be that mcfarland twist where you'll notice that a little something here and there's going to be off here, however, is I think where we have the biggest discrepancy as far as proportions and scaling because even though he is taller and Bane is supposed to be a bit of a ominous presence, he's supposed to pose a bit of a threat, especially to the Dark Knight himself who he breaks, the proportions are a little on the lankier side for a stocky character like Bane. We've seen Tom Hardy in the role, and even though he's about the same height as Christian Bale, he was definitely a lot stockier and bulkier when it comes to the horizontal plane. He had some meat on him. This guy, not so much. It's almost like he weighs the same as Tom Hardy's Bane, but they decided to stretch him out a little bit, so you'll notice that he's a bit on the lankier side. He's taller than Bruce Wayne's uh, Batman, as far as Bale's Batman, and he's going to be a little lankier in that regard because it's almost like they took him and just stretched him out. And therefore, you see that not for a lot, a lot of the legs, and most especially, the arms are going to be a little on the thinner and more narrower side. Yeah, he's a little jacked, and you can definitely see an awful lot of skin definition and muscle definition going alongside the shoulders, the back of the neck. I do appreciate the sculpt and the texturing that is going on with that definition that makes it almost a little lifelike but that's going to come back to bite us in the ass a little bit later we'll, we'll tackle that because even though the actual representation of the skin is pretty accurate and pretty firm it's the actual proportions and the sense of sculpting that it feels almost like different teams and this is just a theory nobody can really prove it but I almost want to believe that this time we really did have separate teams handling different parts of the body. As I was putting him together, I thought to myself, is it just me or is he going to just look a little weird? And it's not as bad as I was fearing, but still you can see an awful lot of discrepancy. Like I said, the arms are a little bit on the lankier side. The joints aren't really doing too many favors, especially the ones on the wrist that kind of stretch out the hands even further down. And then the legs, like I mentioned before, they're even way bigger than even the top half of the body and as we mentioned before as a solid Bane figure on its own it's not terribly bad but if we are to really mimic that of Tom Hardy's interpretation for The Dark Knight Rises it's kind of off the mark. With all that said and done there's actually some pretty decent sculpting work going on with the pants the knee guards right there the boots all that military tactile things and factors and details that he took from his character and implemented them there and i really appreciate the actual detail and sculpting with the rubberized portions of the vest here and the straps going alongside the shoulders but i, uh, I it's funny because i haven't even watched the dark knight rises as much as i've watched the dark knight and even i could tell that we are missing a significant amount of paint apps on his vest i know for a good fact that there's an awful lot of like little orange and black pieces going alongside the straps the velcro parts that are kind of holding everything together and most especially the strings that are kind of zigzagging here on the back i know for a fact that these are like coated red or orange or something like that and there there could have been some extra lifting going alongside 
slide the paint apps here towards the back of the rubberized piece. And that's definitely something that is probably going to be able to uh, satisfy an awful lot of people that do custom jobs. So that would be probably some good commissions going their way. But for, coming directly from McFarlane, I think that could be handled a little bit better. And we see that happening a little bit more so towards the head sculpt, which again, sculpting is actually pretty decent. And normally I kind of criticize the lack of iris paint jobs on the eyes, but I feel like for a character like Bane, who's supposed to look a little dead and almost like a feral animal, it actually kind of works that it's pretty much just a flat out black with a little bit of that shine, that little white in the shine of the eyes, but then everything else is just hollowed out painted painted black so it's cool to see that that actually works in favor of the figure to give him a slightly more menacing look and the sculpting and etching going alongside the grill of the mouthpiece the mask looks pretty well but you can kind of see that a little bit of those paint jobs are starting to fade as we work our way towards the top of the mask it's almost like a little bit of silver kind of wants to come through just a little bit there but then it just starts to fade especially as you look towards the little rivets and dials and little uh, pipings going alongside here on the back where it looks like one notch is painted and then another one doesn't, another one does, another one doesn't. So that could use a little bit of extra custom work. And it's like I said, overall the product here, if it was like a solid figure of a different kind of character that is supposed to emulate a version of Bane, like an Elseworld type Bane, then I would be all for it. But with Tom Hardy's... Yeah, the proportions are definitely a little Frankenstein together, and I get it, it's meant to be a Build-A-Figure, but it's technically, I've come to learn, not really that much of a bonus figure because you're still paying that extra 5 bucks per figure to build this guy, which equals to, you guessed it, 20 bucks, pretty much the standard size of a figure. So, criticism is still going to come, especially when it comes to the articulation, which I'm always going to hold down a strong reservation towards build the figures as far as articulation because I always feel like something is going to be sacrificed in order to factor in the prospect of having to assemble some of these figures. That's where I actually will give a little bit of credit to Bane here where the majority of the articulation is pretty much still intact. The head is able to rotate 360 as well as tilt up and down. Although downwards is pretty generous, especially since it lends to some of those iconic poses from the Dark Knight Rises, but tilting up can only do so much like you see right there. Arms are able to fully rotate 360, and you do see that washer piece kind of covering a little bit of shrugging motion. Not so much in the left, but just a tiny little bit on the right. It's lended a little better by the extension as we go towards the sides here, and it is slightly ratcheted and pretty firm, so being able to handle a T-pose is no problem. Biceps are able to slightly rotate, though do be careful because a little bit of that texturized paint does start to kind of squish the joints into themselves that even I had to take a blow dryer to the right one in order to get it to move uh, peacefully, if you will, without any endangerment towards the paint or the whole piece altogether. Both joints on the elbows are fully able to bend all the way upwards. And despite what I'm about to rant about later and the elongated nature of the joint itself, I do appreciate that the joints on the wrists are the ones that I actually do like, which are not the ball joints, but the ones that are a little bit more cylindrical and look a little bit more natural on the body. So they're fully able to rotate not only at the base of the hand, but also towards the base of the wrist right there, a little higher up. And it's able to cut down the middle, so you're able to pivot the wrist inwards and outwards very fluidly. The torso is going to be a little weird, though, because as I'm demonstrating slightly here, in fact, it's one of the most visually uh presenting forms of the hollowed out torso you know you can kind of make it out a little bit in past reviews but this time you can definitely see the torso pancake itself out right there as I press in the middle portion here because it is hollowed out due to the way that this is all assembled especially when you put it all together via the build a figure process nevertheless though that does allow for some slight crunching inwards and slight extension towards the back but it's being handled mostly by the waist not so much the middle torso there's no sense of mid torso cutting but it is still allowing some crunching of the obliques from side to side and most definitely rotation all the way across 360 degrees horizontally so there is some fluidity happening alongside the torso right there the top leg joints is where we get a little iffy because the way that this is all sculpted and again assembled together does kind of limit and almost internalize the entire joint into a fixed position. But as you kind of move the leg upwards, you can get about that far 
upwards and only about that much towards the back before the, I don't really want to call it the butt skull, but rather the diaper piece starts to flex that way like so. Nevertheless though, the joint still allows full extension towards the sides so long as the legs are properly popped in, which are going to be uh, a chore in and of themselves. The joints on the knees, however, are double jointed right there. So you are able to bend the knee all the way upwards like so. Though mine came very, very stiff. So do be careful with the joints or give them a firm pass with a hairdryer or with some boiling water. And then we get down to the ankles where I am completely 50-50 on. Because on the one hand, once again, they replicate the cylindrical joint as opposed to the ball joint. So it does look a little bit more natural to the boot and allows the ankle to bend downwards and upwards as well as rotation on both the top and the bottom of said joint but the downside is that I feel like these were assembled really really weird that whenever I bend the joints upwards or downwards in almost any kind of direction and either one too it's not even just the left or the right it's both it almost looks like they both kind of want to pop off their joints. You can see right there that a little bit of separation in the middle is starting to happen as I bend the joints. And that, that kind of scares me. It almost makes me feel like one of these days I'm going to give it a firm press, regardless of how many passes I've already given it with the hair dryer, which I've already done a handful of times, and yet it still looks like it's about to part. And I, f I fear that with the passing of time and weathering, this is going to be a problem that one of these days the ankles will give out. As you kind of get down towards the boot, you will notice that the toesies are there. They're a little bit more on the shallower side, but they do allow the toes to be able to bend all the way up like so. Now, unlike the Joker or even Two-Face or even Scarecrow, Bane doesn't really resort to weaponry. He lets his hands do the talking to break the bat. And this is where McFarlane both surprised and shocked. Unlike other builder figures where the hands are already automatically covered on the arms, so whenever you get the figure that comes with the arms, it's going to come with the hands, and that's pretty much the extent of it. If there's any accessories, it's going to be thrown in either with the torso, the head, etc. This time, Bane had his hands completely separated along with his head in the Joker builder figure unit. And it wasn't just one set of hands. As you see demonstrated here, already attached to the figure, he comes with a set of fisted hands, but also two more pairs. One semi-open pair of hands, just to kind of have in a little bit more of a neutral position. And it almost looks like he would hold a detonator there. So I'm looking forward to any customizers out there to maybe put together a little you know, detonator for him to hold. And then the others are kind of like these trigger-looking hands where his two centerized fingers and his thumb are kind of extended in a very trigger-like pose almost to kind of like maybe taunt Batman as if he's you know I'm Gotham's destiny where he kind of extends that iconic shot from Dark Knight Rises so that's pretty dope here's the problem though in order to be able to swap out the hands which is actually a pretty generous thing to do on the neutral what I like to call the neutral hand because it's the one without the glove or the wristband right there that that one actually is able to swap out the hands pretty fluidly and it's actually a very comfortable process it would be a much more comfortable process to do it on the gloved arm if it wasn't for the humongous assembly guffaw that McFarlane completely f***ed up on. You see, this is what held up this review. This is why it took so long to get this review up because my initial unit of Scarecrow came with the arms and as noted by some other people on Reddit, which thank God I allowed enough time to have people kind of tell this and it's a it's a huge you know sad situation considering that people had to go to twitter and find out for themselves and let them kind of deal with this whole ordeal which was very unfortunate and very frustrating it turned out that the joint on the gloved hand was assembled backwards so as you can see right here the joint is actually supposed to be much more rounded right out of the box the joint on the gloved arm is actually a bit girthier and almost like a flat top that is actually supposed to be on the inside of the wrist it's the other end with a much more bulbous and slightly smaller joint that's supposed to be sticking out to allow you to fit the gloved hands into place and being able to swap them in and out for the different ones that you want to your liking 
obviously that wasn't the case and I didn't want to risk breaking my figure and so I took to Reddit, I did my research and I saw a lot of people talk about dipping it in boiling water, passing it with a hair dryer and I did all these different methods, left it in hot water for like 10 to 15 minutes, you know, kept trying in intervals of 5 minutes but left it in there for a good amount of time, tried passing it with the hair dryer and try as I might with a pair of pliers and as much delicate handling as I could, it still broke. And before you assume that I was like twisting it or trying to use some kind of physics-based fulcrum to get it to bend and kind of displace itself out of the joint, no, I was just pulling. I was just pulling and I felt like it was softening up and that was just my naivete getting to me thinking that, oh, it's loosening up. There you go. It looks like it's fixing. As I then pulled a little farther, that's when I was struck with dread and I realized that the movement I was feeling was the plastic warping and breaking off. And there you go. Joint completely broken off. And so I posted this on Reddit. Somebody brought up the suggestion of actually reaching out to McFarland Toys customer service and huge shout out to McFarland Toys' customer service department because not only did they respond to my email quick, but it was literally the next day that they placed the order for my replacement scarecrow that will then come with the replacement arm for me to try again. Now, that's a shout out for the customer service for people that are in front of the computer handling these inquiries, making sure that orders are placed. Huge shout out to them. Huge f you to whoever works at the warehouse because it's the warehouse folks who probably saw, and this is a huge tinfoil hat conspiracy. It's just a theory. I can't obviously confirm this, but trust me, I worked in retail. I know how sometimes warehouse people like to work. And whenever they see an invoice saying that it's costing them $0 to buy this thing and the memo reads for replacing defective figure, the usual mentality, whether it be from them or from someone higher up, is to say, oh yeah, those, don't worry about them. Prioritize the orders of people that actually paid for the figures. From a business perspective, sure, that makes sense. Ethically and from the customer's perspective, yeah, that's that's not going to work. I'm sorry. It, it doesn't take away from the frustration. And as such, it took two weeks, one week for it to even be picked up by USPS and then another for it to actually arrive from Warehouse because Warehouse just printed the shipping label and then just kind of left it sitting there. I, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, obviously, there's probably some other factors that were happening behind the scenes that I don't know about. But it's one measly package. It's not like a huge order anyways. That's besides the point. It finally comes and to my horror, it is still misassembled. I pull it out of the box it is still assembled incorrectly with the flat top out and the smaller peg in. This time though, I took, I can't remember their name, but someone responded to my Reddit post saying that they tried taking a needle and kind of poking inside of the joint to try to chip away the paint that was then grafting everything together because an awful lot of these joints are painted and then assembled, or rather they're assembled while the paint is still a little bit fresh, and therefore it's going to cause corrosion, it's going to cause grafting, and therefore it's going to cause an awful lot of these pieces to just gel together and not allow articulation to fully happen. So I took a needle... And I took very hot boiling water, much more hotter than it was before. As you see right here, dipping it in intervals, chipping away a little bit with the needle. And then finally, with the hair dryer, I actually, this time, unlike the first time, I took the level of the hair dryer and pumped it up. I was scared to do so at the beginning because I didn't want to risk melting the paint off my figure. But this time, I was really in, you know, screw it mode. I turned it up to a high energy or high power instead of the low power like it was before got really close to the joint, gave it a firm tug, unfortunately off camera because I was just so frustrated that I needed the elbow room. I did it off camera. And finally, we got the joint to come off without breaking. It popped off, success, victory, swapped it, rotated it around, and popped it back in. And now we have a functioning wrist joint that is able to allow both hands to be interswapped between the fisted, the semi-open, and then the gestured or taunting, I guess you could say, hands. So it's cool that we have this functionality with Bane, with one of the more expressive characters or expressive villains from the Dark Knight trilogy. This, however, does not excuse what I believe to be a rushed wave from McFarland, because 
as I mentioned in some of the other reviews for the Dark Knight Trilogy Wave, we've already had some QC issues and just overall objectively mishandled parts that just feel kind of off for the usual success rate you expect from McFarlane. That combined with just how quickly these things went, were be, becoming available and just downright shipping out from their warehouse the day that pre-orders went live, something I knew was a little amiss. And not only with the actual quality and nature and overall assembly of Bane here, which even taking the whole wrist debacle out of the equation, was still a pain in the ass getting these legs to actually pop in and be flush with the rest of the crotch piece and actually get be able to stick in there. I actually hurt my hand a couple of times to do so. And don't even get me started on the joints popping into the chest here to get the arms to situate in place. These were also a bit of a nightmare. The head was also not popping in right. I had to, like again, give the entire ensemble a pass with the hairdryer on high power. And finally, it worked its way into the joints and assembled together and held their own. Still, call me privileged, call me a snob. I really don't think we need to be able to do all this as collectors. Maybe one or two occasions here and there, but when you have the entirety of the Build-A-Figure pieces from all four figures of the wave, and I don't want to get a little ahead of myself here, but I actually have another figure that I'm reviewing where the head popped off, and I am having the most difficult time trying to pop it in, and whether or not it's a QC issue or just an isolated incident. So this... Coming off the heels of that other Batman figure, I'm like, what is going on? Are we rushing figures at, right out of the factory? And again, the release window and the overall release process of the Dark Knight Trilogy wave and the issue that Amazon is having fulfilling orders, I just feel like McFarlane may have screwed the pooch a little bit with the Dark Knight Trilogy wave. I feel like they might have rushed this wave and not given it the treatment and the consideration and care it deserved, especially with one of the more beloved iterations of Batman of all time, just so they can get to the Flash figures or to get to some more other comic accurate figures later down the line that they have working on or maybe some other properties, some other stuff. You know, they're thinking about doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They still got some, uh, maybe some Avatar stuff kind of down the pipeline. And then of course Spawn. I think they're doing some Demon Slayer stuff now. So I don't know. Again, there's so many waves and so many things that they're dealing with here that it almost reminds me of situations like this that happen within the video game industry where you have a company that's trying to do a little bit too much and then the quality of all the things that they're pumping out just starts to diminish. Telltale with the Walking Dead games and all that stuff, that to me is the epitome of a company that's trying to do too much. And I feel like McFarlane in the action figure space is starting to mimic that. And there goes Bane falling. We did have a couple of highlights like Scarecrow being an underrated figure and then Joker being a very seminal interpretation of the Heath Ledger version. But then I noticed that I was giving an awful lot of sixes out of tens with the likes of Two-Face, Batman, and now I'll go ahead and give Bane. I was tempted to give him even a 5 out of 10 because of how nightmarish and just infuriating that assembly process really was. But that's not really the figure's fault. It's much, much more so the way that everything was just kind of piecemealed and assembled in a very scattershot kind of way. Once everything came together, he did in fact warm up to me a slight notch, but not enough to again not give it a 6 out of 10 once more. And that's 3 6s out of the entire wave. 3 6s, 1 7, and 1 8. No 9s. And considering that the majority of the wave results in a 6 out of 10, a very okay rating, it's still nevertheless disappointing for one of my most anticipated McFarlane Toys waves of the year. But as the internet has proven, that's just one man's opinion. Guys, now I want to hear from you with the final review of the McFarlane Toys Dark Knight Trilogy wave here with Bane. I want to now turn the discussion over to you. Do you feel like the wave overall was rushed? Do you think that maybe they should have waited after doing the Flash figures to then put some more time and attention and care into this wave to make sure that we didn't have a misassembled wrist, that we didn't have paint apps going awry, and to make sure that some of our figures were properly proportioned, whether it be Bane here with the lanky nature of his arms or Batman with just how girthy and weird looking his overall torso is versus the bottom half of his body and etc etc 
Let me know your guys' insights and thoughts in the comment section below. If you guys do want to pick up any of the McFarlane Toys figures, if you want to attempt to go ahead and still bring the wave home, then be sure to use the links in the description to help with the channel. They are affiliate links. And if you guys want to check out any of the prior McFarlane Toys Dark Knight Trilogy figure reviews, check them out on the screen right now. My voice is now disappearing after that angry rant. I appreciate you guys for sticking all the way to the very end. And until next time, guys, stay humble.